When Chuck Radis started his practice on the islands of Casco Bay as a young doctor in the 1980s, he was about to get an education. It was always a, a challenge. Every day was a challenge. The islanders have a reputation for being famously independent, a little stubborn, often a little reluctant to embrace people whom they don't know. How did they treat you as this guy who came from out, out came from away and uh, and wasn't known out here? I think they appreciated we lived year round out here. I wasn't coming over from Portland. Maybe I was oblivious to that feeling of, of, of not belonging, but I, I, I always felt that these were my people. One challenge mainland doctors didn't have to deal with was simply getting around. Radis figures he spent about 11 hours a week simply riding the ferry from Peaks Island to Portland or making house calls on Long, Shabig, and Cliff Islands. It was a tough schedule, but you know, I'd be in the ferry hold and I would, um, I, I would write notes this, this is actually what I would use, an at-a-glance thing, and, and I would write down phrases or illnesses or questions or things to do, and um, I filled up my time uh, by th thinking about medical problems and also thinking about uh, the patients. You eventually got your own boat, and you thought this would make your life easier because you could maybe shoot over to Long Island and shoot right. over to Great Diamond and so forth. How long did you have that boat, Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> Probably about three or four months before it sank. R out on the mooring, just, just out here in October. Uh, that first boat, I, I did learn a lot, but... Uh, uh, and the reaction of the islanders was basically, <laughs> uh, gee, it, we were surprised it lasted three or four months. We thought it would last about three or four weeks out there. For a kid growing up in New Jersey, you know, I came up here knowing nothing about boats, and that showed with my first boat. You learned pretty early on that people much, much preferred to be treated at home on the islands. They, they didn't even want to go into Portland if they could avoid it. I mean, not just if they couldn't avoid it, but unless the situation were dire, they didn't want to go into Portland. They wanted you to come to them, right? Right. I, I would meet people who would see me at the clinic and say, I haven't been over to this side of the island for the last 10 years. You know, it's like, okay, you know, this is really staying home. So you, you would see people who are extremely homebound. You were out here practicing before cell phones right. were a thing. So you were kind of at the end of an era in one way, <laughs> weren't you? So Yeah. I, I would go on the Casco Bay lines. I'd go up to the pilot house. If I had my beeper, because we had beepers, if it went off and the beeper was, say, the emergency room, because I did some work at the hospital also, I, I would go up to the captain's house and he would patch me through on the marine radio and then I'd kind of move back and people would pretend like they didn't hear what I was saying in the pilot house. And, uh, and so that was my connection. Otherwise, I was looking for phone booths. You write that one day you were in Feeney's Market here on Peaks, which is the only grocery store on the island, and you realized that everyone in the in line at the checkout counter was someone you had examined. And that means in a pretty personal and intimate way, every right. single person. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a strange uh, sense, you know, when you quietly look around and, and you note all that. You know, I, I know a lot about the people I was treating and they know a lot about me because this is an island and, and um, you know, living out here, uh, people knew our own struggles, so. This is not paradise out here. There's physical illness, there's mental illness. The problems that you find on the mainland are all found out here. Part of the reason I wanted to write uh, this book was a lot of medical writing, you know, is kind of exciting and one time, like sur surgeons do a lot of writing and, and they kind of have these one shot exciting things. And, and uh, I, I wanted to show how people adapt and, and sometimes uh, overcome big challenges. And so uh, knowing these people for a long time, I, I wanted to show that side of, of resilience on uh, people that I treated. You had to have some resilience, and you write about this in the book because this took a toll on your personal life. You were just so consumed by work that it had an effect on your marriage, and your wife said to you, would you go to marriage counseling? Right, right. I knew the answer had to be yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said yes. We, we're still married, and it's now um, uh, of 42 years we've been married. Radis still makes occasional house calls, and after four decades in medicine, he still has great affection for patients past and present.
I miss a lot of them, you know, uh, and, and there's something about a local cemetery. You know, we have a couple cemeteries here on the island. You know, you see people you treated who eventually passed away, and it's nice to have that connection to, uh, to people who uh, gave it the good fight for the most part. Have some of the islanders already read the book, and if so, what have they said about it? As we walked up the hill to get here at Lisa's, the coffee shop, she gave me a thumbs up. Ultimately, uh, you know, the, there, there may be some feedback that's not as uh, happy about it coming, but I guess uh, I did my best, and, and I felt the message that I was trying to get out about resilience and about uh, my love of the of people of Casco Bay, you know, I, I really wanted to get that out, what it was like to, to have a medical practice out here. So I hope I'm forgiven if there is some blowback. <laughs>